David. I'm a senior product manager responsible for our hardware platforms and modem support. Here at Creative Point, and follow me after is Mike Hagman, a uh, senior product manager responsible for all of our cloud management systems. We'll be talking about some new analytics we have. So I'm going to dive in today about the core IDR900 that Creative Point launched earlier this month. And this router is extending Creative Point's leadership role with 4G LTE networking. Uh, it's the first LTE router in the world to offer uh, the latest generation of Wave 2 gigabit Wi-Fi. So it's dual band, dual concurrent Wi-Fi with AC technology on the 5 gigahertz radio, and it's the first LTE radio with Wave 2 Wi-Fi. I'll talk about what that means in a little bit here. It's also got a quad-core processor, sport gigabit Ethernet, gigabit Wi-Fi, and all of the latest LTE advances the networks are rolling out. Uh, across Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, the Canadian networks, and the international to get the best use out of those LTE advancements. It's also purpose-built to meet the needs of in-vehicle networking, which requires a lot of hardening, both on the uh, physical side of the device as well as the electrical side to survive those environments. It's also a compact device. It's the most powerful LTE router of its size. And then it also supports Cradle Point's uh, extensibility platform that includes everything from our router software development kit to deploy code on the router itself to the core extensibility dock where you can add additional hardware to this router with extra Ethernet ports and interfaces, as well as the Enterprise Cloud Manager API to tie into third party cloud management systems. So, in summary, the core IBR900, pound for pound, dollar for dollar, inch for inch, is the most powerful. LTE router on the market. It fits in our core product line uh, for the end-to-end -end IoT and transportation space. On the uh, on the lower end of our, our product line, mid-range, we have the core IBR600 and IBR600B designed for kiosk, ATM, and digital signage. And then a, a couple of years ago, we launched the core IDR1100 uh, in-vehicle networking platform. The IBR900 is nearly as small as the IBR600, but has all of the vehicle features uh, designed for vehicle positioning. So it fits in between these two devices, but it can support all of the applications, including transportation, first responders, um, buses, taxis, uh, rail, light rail. Uh, it, but it can also support all the parallel networking pop-up stores. You can use this for events or, uh, or as a primary uh, LTE router if you only need those two Ethernet connections, one WAN, one LAN, but both of them are WAN LAN switchable, so you could have two LANs uh, as well. And so uh, if you're trying to decide whether or not to buy the IBR1100 versus the IBR900, the IBR900 is going to be the best transportation router in most uh, places. And then if you want a high-end M2M IoT router, the IBR900 or IBR950 is also your best bet. We're going to be selling this product in two different ways, or two different accessory kits. We've got our IBR900 and IBR950 LP6-NE. That LP6 modem, that's the modem designator, it's LTE Advanced, uh, Category 6 LTE with SIM-based auto carrier selection. We've also got versions for Europe and Asia Pacific. Uh, and it goes uh, for $899 for the Wi-Fi version and $799 for the non-Wi-Fi version. And by default, it will ship with an AC adapter, your modem antennas, as well as your Wi-Fi antennas. For vehicle deployments, uh, we are also offering a no power supply, no antenna SKU. And so that's actually $30 less, and that will just ship with a power slash GPIO cable. And that's the way the core IBR1100 ships today. So if you're deploying it in a vehicle, you'll generally wire out antennas for GPS, cell and Wi-Fi, and so those antennas won't chip in the box, and you obviously don't need an AC power supply if you're wiring it directly into the battery with ignition sensing. And so the core IBR900, as compared to the IBR1100, is actually $30 less, even though it's way more powerful and much faster. And then if you want to deploy in a kiosk or a fixed installation, we ship with all the accessories by default uh, with the standard SKU. So what are the differences, and why would you consider buying the IBR 1100 or the IBR 900 over the IBR 1100? And then how does this compare to other products in the market space? Well, I already mentioned pound for pound, dollar for dollar, inch for inch. This is the most powerful LTE router in the market, which means, I mean, it's faster uh, and, and uh, it's 
supports more applications with the latest generations of technology out there. It's got the fastest performance with a quad-core processor. It's got two gigabit Ethernet ports. It also supports faster VPN because of the faster processor and encryption. Uh, so you can set up multiple VPN tunnels. You can uh, pass data through those VPN tunnels much faster. It also has the fast, fastest modem throughput of any product uh, on the market. For Cat6 LTE Advanced um, networks, the theoretical maximum speeds are 300 megabits a second. In real-world applications, we've seen this uh, perform at over 290 megabits per second. So it's almost meeting those theoretical maximums on that network. And it has more memory. It also supports faster throughput on Wi-Fi. Uh, again, that's dual band, dual concurrent Wi-Fi. So you can broadcast both on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz uh, spectrum at the same time. 64 clients can connect to each of those radios at the same time. And then it supports Wave 2 technology. And this is the first SOC. It uses the first SOC on the market that has those technologies integrated, which is why we can offer this very powerful product at a relatively low price point. So what is Wave 2 Wi-Fi offering? Why, did, why do people care? Well, it supports a couple of new technologies called multi-user MIMO and 256 clock. The multi-user MIMO means you can talk to multiple clients at the same time using multiple antennas. Uh, and then that 256 QAM is a higher order modulation. That just means we can pass more bits over the same uh, piece of frequency. And and in the end result is it's simply faster for all of the devices connected. It passes more data to more clients faster. And so that's what th that's about. It also supports WPA2 enterprise authentication for Wi-Fi as WAN and Wi-Fi client mode. And this is, uh, this is important for what we call our, our home station. All of our products that support Wi-Fi also support Wi-Fi as WAN. And so you can connect to Wi-Fi access points as a client to get your data. Uh, instead of the LTE network or in addition to the LTE network for failover and failback and load balancing. And this is often used in public safety or uh, mass transportation where you have video cameras on the vehicle, either for public safety like a body cam or for, for surveillance on a bus. And that, low, that video will be stored locally on a DVR uh, because they don't want to upload it over the LTE network. But when that bus or police car drives into the home station, it connects to Wi-Fi as WAN, and that will trigger all of the offload of that data uh, over that Wi-Fi as WAN connection. And it can be done securely with enterprise authentication. Um, it can. It also, in addition to supporting that dedicated home station mode, we can also support Wi-Fi as WAN and support clients at the same time. And so you can have both, uh, both uh, the radio active for serving clients and Wi-Fi as WAN. And so you can. Um, both use Wi-Fi as the LAN source and serve clients at the same time. This product also supports more extensibility. We have a hardware dock we call the Core Extensibility Dock um, that uh, is an add-on. And it's like the IBR 1100 dual modem dock, except it supports more features than just dual modem. Uh, we have a router SDK. The IBR 1100 supports um, uh, that I'll talk about here in a bit. It also has dual modem support. And so integrated into the IBR 1100 is one CAT6 LTE modem. So it supports SIM-based auto carry selection. So that one piece of hardware and that one SKU for all of North America supports all of the carriers in North America. Simply insert your SIM and it will connect. You can also add a second radio so you can have uh, load balancing at the same time. So you can connect to two carriers at the same time. So say either Sprint and Verizon or you could buy a router with, say, uh, Verizon as your primary connect, and a second modem you could buy. It could be, a, say, a Band 14 public safety modem that Create a Point offer also offers. Uh, we also have more flash memory. Uh, the, the device is also redundant, power supply capable, and we have more GPIOs on the device. Uh, the modem. Uh, is the Category 6 LT Advanced Support with HSPA Plus fallback. So it's LTE HSPA Plus, which is the 3D technology that uh, AT&T, T-Mobile, and most international carriers use. And uh, <coughs> it supports uh, worldwide SIM-based auto carrier selection. There's also a number of uh, electrical protection features built into the IBR 900, including supporting a wider voltage input range of 9 to 33 volts. So you can plug it directly into a 24-volt bus system without um, DC to DC converters. It also has a, uh, protection built in for you know when the vehicle turns on, the voltage spikes and drops, and there's those transient voltages. 
which can fry the electronics. The electrical protections are built into the IBR 900. Mm. It also supports ignition sensing. So when you turn the de de uh, vehicle on, the device will automatically boot up. And then when you turn the device off, the IBR 900 will automatically shut off after a user-defined delay. So this means as you're making, uh, say, deliveries throughout the day, your, your Wi-Fi is active, your LTE data connection is active, your GPS is active, sending those GPS sentences to an ABL or your uh, vehicle location uh, provider. Uh, and then when you shut the vehicle off to run in for a, a delivery for five minutes, that GPS, Wi-Fi, and data all remain active. Uh, drive around making all your deliveries, drive back into home base, automatically connects up as Wi-Fi as when, offloads all that DVR video data, and then after, say, that half an hour timeout you have, it would shut off the router, come back the next morning, and, uh, and the battery would still be alive. The hardware also supports dual SIM slots with SIM-based auto carrier selection. Uh, and while you have dual SIMs, only one of the SIMs can be active at the same time because there's only one radio in the device unless you add a second modem with that core extensibility dock uh, as well. Uh, you can fail over and fail back between those two SIMs, but it's not the recommended installation uh, because it's slower failover because the modem has to uh, reflash the uh, image to change from, say, uh, Sprint to Verizon. And then the failback is what I call blind failback. You don't know when the original carrier is back up online, so you have to switch back blindly. It also has an ingress protection rating of 54. The, the 5 means uh, it's dust tight, and the 4 means water resistant. So you can't deploy it directly out in the elements, but you could put it in the, uh, under the eave of a building or it's uh, protected for vehicle installations. The ambient operating temperature spec uh, is minus 30 to 70 C, so it works in very cold and very hot environments. And we've tested our device to actually run at these uh, temperatures in real world environments. And so uh, uh, head to head, uh, we've compared it against uh, competitive devices that publish specs of minus 40 to 85. And our, our device, even though it's rated only minus 30 to 70, which is still a wide rating outperformance with most of the competition. It also has integrated mounting, and so you don't need a separate mounting back to mount it. And then it has a robust two-piece die cast design. So the front, back, top, and bottom, and edges are all solid metal. So this is Mike Hagen. I'll talk briefly about some of the software solutions and that are wrapped around and integrated with the Core IBR 900. So the uh, Core IBR 900 supports the entire CradlePoint Net Cloud platform suite of solutions. That's a mouthful. The platform, of course, is that that's our software defined and cloud delivered services platform that consists of uh, ECM, so Enterprise Cloud Manager, and Net Cloud Engine, which is our network as a service cloud delivered uh, overlay network virtual network solution. So the core IBR. Uh, 900 supports the entire suite of solutions. Um, let me compare that a little bit to the 600 and the 1100 that David talked about. So on the 600 side, um, it's not, the 600 is not going to support the NetCloud Engine products, okay, or the NetCloud Engine solution for people, places, and things. If you talk about the 1100, it does support NetCloud Engine. However, um, the 900 also supports uh, unified threat management solutions, so our, our threat management solution. Now, it doesn't do that today as we speak, but it will shortly in the coming months, which allows the 900 to support, once again, any solution that we have for people, places, and things, whether it's network as a service, and all the features of Prime and our cloud managed solutions over wired or wireless solutions. And it's the first, launch, first product in our core uh, series that support all the solutions. So it's a pretty exciting thing. Well, I'm now going to talk about <clears throat> the Cradle Point extensibility platform. And what we'd like to do is offer our partners and customers the ability to customize the router for their specific application uh, to both enhance the number of applications it uh, can support and, and make it uh, purpose-built for your exact solution. So we have multiple elements to this uh, extensibility platform. The first is uh, a developer community portal, which we have up and live right now where uh, customers and partners can leverage knowledge, share collaboration with other developers. Uh, it has completely made data transfer to the cloud, so you can get the data you're collecting at the device and in the port on it. And you can also plug in redundant power to this. And so that way you can have power plugged directly into the IBR 900 and power into the core extensibility dock. And one of those power supplies fails, 
uh, in a remote application, the other one's still alive. Um, and that core extensibility doc runs for $179.99. In addition, you can get uh, an MC400. Uh, if you just want some extra GPIOs or ignition sensing redundant power, we also sell an, a nine wire GPIO cable that plugs directly into this core extensibility dock port. So the IBM 900 has that port. And then we have a lot more information on the core RBR 900 with many new resources publicly available on our website. We have our, our product comparison chart. We have the, the product page. As you move from to the, to the next one, which is GeoView, now we start to talk about ECM Prime features. So GeoView, which is our location services and the analytics that you get there. Um, carrier data usage, 